He counted all as loss in order to know Christ and to have a share in his sufferings, conforming himself to his death. Again, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we come to this Monday morning, we come with hearts open and grateful, mindful of our God's presence amongst us, and mindful of our need for him. And so we turn uh, to him, opening our minds and our hearts as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the virtue of all your saints, grant us joy in the yearly commemoration of Saint Clement, who was a martyr, who as a martyr and high priest of your son, bore out by his witness what he celebrated in mystery and confirmed by example what he preached with his lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty thousand who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. They were singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 140,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips, no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest, for those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. They were singing what seemed like a, a new hymn before the throne. I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, we have the, a very beautiful image uh, in the book of our first reading from the book of, of Revelation. Uh, this morning, Revelation, what we've been hearing from, uh, from John, having these visions uh, of the heavenly kingdom. And what does he say heaven is like? Well, it's being in the presence of God and singing a hymn. Something, one of the most beautiful things about being human, right, is that we can listen to music. We can listen to and create music with instruments, just sound vibrations, essentially, that uh, either sound uh, good to us, uh, or not so good to us. And heaven is just the, the most beautiful song uh, that we have before God. Almost kind of like what we do here uh, at Mass, you know, uh, from time to time. But I think it can give us uh, a bit of an interesting reflection, a fruitful reflection for us and our lives. Maybe it might reduce things a little bit, but in music there are kind of two major movements. We could say uh, harmony uh, and dissonance. Harmony is when you know, kind of everything is kind of working together, and there's a there's a balance, uh, kind of in the in the strings and in the voices. And dissonance is when things clash and they're and they're contrasting. Uh, sometimes it can be nice to listen to, and and sometimes not. Um, dissonance. Well, imagine the hymn that the, the heavenly, uh, heavenly hosts are singing in heaven is something of a harmony, uh, and not something that's, that's dissonant. Well, how can that apply you know, to us and our lives? Well, I would say that, you know, in a certain sense, there's us on one hand, and there's a life of grace and a life of holiness on the other hand. And we become who we are called to be. We become, we become saints as our lives and God's plan and grace you know, come into a harmony, as they become one, as they work together in a kind of a beautiful way. Versus the times in our lives where there's us and God's plan and we, you know, so harmony is a yes uh, to God's plan in life and dissonance would be uh, a no to God's plan in life where there's a certain clashing uh, between us and God. And I think we can see this in a way in our gospel. Jesus kind of sees this woman put these two coins uh, into the treasury. And he points her out you know, that we're dealing with a very poor but a very holy woman. That for some reason God was leading her to this, this place uh, to give all that she had you know, for him. That her harmony with God that day was worth it no matter the cost. And so living a life of holiness is worth it for us, uh, no matter what. And then today, too, we celebrate uh, the feast of St. Uh, Clement I, who is uh, the third pope, uh, so two, po two popes after, East, uh, after Peter. And what he was most known for was uh, a letter that he wrote to the Corinthian uh, community. And then at the time, the Corinthians uh, had a lot of disunity. They had a lot of discord. Uh, and division over, uh, over something. And he wrote to them saying this, Charity unites us to God. It knows no schism, does not rebel, does all things in concord. In charity, all, um, all, all, for God, all that has been given in God has been made perfect. So Clement highlights it for us that charity and a life of love 
is what brings harmony between us uh, and God. So today, as we're at this Mass here in prayer, may we uh, see which parts of our lives are harmonious with God and His plan and His grace in our lives, uh, and which is not, and which is rather dissonant. May we ask Him to reveal those places to us. May we have the courage uh, to bring before Him uh, those places that are dissonant so that He can, through His grace, bring us to the great harmony of heaven. We bring before our Heavenly Father our needs for church leaders. May the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in shepherding their flocks. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders throughout the world, may God bless their efforts to end hatred and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. For those facing persecution for the sake of righteousness, may the Father grant them strength and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the children of our school, for all teachers and administrators, uh, as they go virtual today, uh, that they may be uh, kept safe uh, and sane uh, as they enter into this new stage of their school year. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the love of Christ help us to sow seeds that bear fruit uh, and much love. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, May they live forever in the joy of heaven and the harmony, in harmony with all the saints and angels. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the personal intentions we hold in our hearts and bring to this Mass. And for Mary Gula, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know us and you love us. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers and petitions. They be in accord with your will and be in your time. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate your blessed martyr, Clement, who no, whom no temptation could separate from the unity of the body of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Clement, poured out like Christ's, to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, 
by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is thee who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you of how thus worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that we're taking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. I am present. the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, bears fruit in plenty. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Made new by these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, that imitating the wondrous constancy of blessed Saint Clement, we may merit an eternal reward for suffering endured through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.